Well, ladies and gentlemen, today is the day of the electoral count and the day of big protests planned in DC. I'm here to catch you up to speed for everything you need to know ahead of today's events in five minutes or less. And this early morning recording is brought to you with the help of Second Amendment supporting Blackout Coffee Company, which you can purchase at www.blackoutcoffee.com slash Liberty Doll. Some big events have kicked off ahead of today's festivities, that being that the DC Metro Police have posted notices all around the Capitol prohibiting all firearms in the downtown area starting Wednesday. DC Mayor Muriel Bowser also released a statement reminding folks that district law prohibits anyone from carrying a firearm within 1,000 feet of any First Amendment activity as well as in national park areas. A handful of Republican lawmakers are planning to contest the electoral results and have recently had protesters show up at their homes. Whether those groups were angry mobs or peaceful vigils has been a point of debate. Ahead of the protests, Proud Boys chairman Enrique Tarrio was arrested last week on suspicion of burning a Black Lives Matter flag that was torn from a church during protests last month. He was also found to be in possession of some standard capacity magazines during the arrest, and a judge has banned him from D.C. completely. He is being charged with one misdemeanor for destruction of property and two felony counts of possession of high-capacity magazines. Also on Tuesday, it was announced that New York's air traffic control has somehow been hacked, and on Monday, controllers were given the message, we are flying a plane into the Capitol on Wednesday, Soleimani will be avenged. The message is in reference to an Iranian general killed in a U.S. drone strike last year. The message was also sent on the one-year anniversary of his death. U.S. officials are investigating the breach, and they are saying that they don't believe it's a credible threat, but hot damn wouldn't that be something that would make things way, way worse. Speaking of things getting ugly, the Pennsylvania Senate kicked off its new session with Republicans refusing to seat Democratic Senator Jim Brewster and removing the Democrat Lieutenant Governor from presiding over the session. They did so under the belief that Lieutenant Governor Fetterman was breaking the rules and not recognizing their legislative motions. Democrats retaliated by then refusing to back Republican Senator Jake Corman from assuming the chamber's leadership position during what is typically only a ceremonial vote. The state constitution does allow senators to refuse to seat someone if they don't believe that person meets the qualifications of office, and Brewster narrowly won re-election in results that have been certified by the state but are being examined in federal court based on mail-in ballots that did not meet state requirements. Democrats accused Republicans of being reckless Trumpian cowboys, kicking off what is apparently going to be an Awesome! Two years for Pennsylvania! Also on Tuesday, the Kenosha District Attorney announced no charges for any of the police officers involved in the Jacob Blake shooting. At the time, Blake had a warrant for felony sexual assault, trespassing, and domestic abuse. He had just violated a restraining order, had a knife, and was trying to flee the scene with children inside the vehicle. Officers initially tried to tase him and physically restrain him before the shooting. And uh, we all remember what happened next, and it rhymes with diets and Miles Kittenhouse. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. City and county officials are gearing up for similar reactions. My new home state of South Carolina has introduced a bill to make it illegal to discriminate against people who opt out of getting vaccinated against an infectious disease and to preemptively make it illegal to make the COVID vaccine mandatory which is pretty dang cool and pretty much all I have to say about that. And finally, because what update would be complete without COVID news, we have more coming out of California. Emergency Medical Services put out a memo in LA County to limit which people would be taken to the hospital for treatment and hospitals are now rationing oxygen treatments to their patients. According to CNN, roughly 20,000 people are currently hospitalized with COVID-19 across the country, and nearly half of them are in LA County. 
That's your Liberty Minute rundown of the news. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're new here. Check out my regular videos on my channel and be sure to tune into my live streams on Tuesdays at 9 p.m. and Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Stay safe today and I will see you on the next one.